those little 10 minute spurts are gold and you're capable of knocking out a quick sketch, writing 200 words, recording a quick video clip or some type of audio on the go. What's going on? You're listening to episode 42 of the Perspective Podcast, and I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. This show was all about carving out time to build something with your creativity. I know I kind of change it up from week to week, but I think I finally found what this show is about within this season. I don't ever want to be the guy who stands up on a soapbox giving advice. That's not what I want to be known for. I don't feel like I'm an expert in, in order to do that. Rather, I want to be the type of person who shares what works and what doesn't work for me as I figure things out on my creative path. Maybe you'll find something that you should or shouldn't apply to your own method of madness, okay? I I just want to be an open source, and if it helps, it helps. If it doesn't, it is what it is. And if you're listening to the show, then I'm taking a stab at the fact that you're like me. You want to build something, something that's your own. Something you could be proud of and enjoy doing along the way. And maybe it's just something you can leave behind for other people to enjoy as well. Finding time to build something for yourself can be difficult. Especially when you are building something from someone else full time like a day job or maybe you have kids or other kinds of commitments. That's what today's topic is about as it comes directly from Shane Donaldson aka at Rustic Overtones on Instagram, and he signed up for my newsletter over at PerspectiveCollectiveTeam.com. And the reason why he got to pick today's topic is because when you sign up over at my newsletter, you get an onboarding email question asking, what is your biggest struggle when pursuing your creativity? And I love getting responses to this because, one, it lets me know I'm not alone with my certain demons like comparison or just doubt in my abilities. The second reason is because it lets me see reoccurring patterns and topics that I know will hit home with you. Finally, it allows me to connect and engage directly with people like you. So Shane's response to this onboarding question was, my biggest struggle is balancing the little time I have with a focus. And this seems to be a repeating theme and I feel it deserves addressing as I know someone listening deals with the same thing. To Shane's credit, He works in IT for the day job, but comes home and creates amazing custom wooden cutout lettering. I highly recommend you check out his Instagram at Rustic Overtones. Also, I'm going to link this dude up in the show notes over at perspective-collective.com slash 42. And thanks for this week's topic, Shane. And before I get into the show, if you want to influence the direction of an episode and reach out directly to me, or maybe you just want to get this newsletter which is designed to give you a midweek creative boost then you can join the team over at perspective-collectiveteam.com let's get into the show all right so finding time to build for yourself if you're listening to the show you obviously want to build something for yourself something on your own terms where you call the shots of what you create You want this so badly, but maybe the day job or tending to your family makes it hard to find the time, motivation, or the energy to focus. Maybe you're unsure where to start or had little results in the past, so you're hesitant on where or how to invest your time. I'll admit, watching cat videos on YouTube or playing video games to escape is quite tempting. Currently, between you and me, I've been low-key binging on Game of Thrones while I draw, because the new season is coming out soon, so yes, I'm strangely addicted to Game of Thrones. Uh, I binged it when I was out on surgery, then I was so addicted I had to listen to all the audiobooks, which are like 40 hours a piece, and now I'm re-binging it to prep me up for the show. But I'm sorry that's rambling totally off the subject here, but here's the question I have for you. How do you balance the little time you have with the focus? By focus, I mean something like working on your own side project or maybe your own business. While I can't relate to having kids, I would say I've become pretty efficient and decent in managing my time outside of the day job and my husband duties 
to focus on Perspective Collective. Regardless of your commitments, here are three practical things I focus on each day that allow me to build something for myself. The first one is focus on one thing a day to execute. The second is I plan my day the night before. And the third is that I kill distractions during my work time. So let's get into the first one. One thing each day. How often do you give yourself a massive, daunting to-do list of a million things and you find yourself unsure where to start? It's like giving yourself the assignment to climb Mount Everest in a day. It's easy to feel defeated before you even start. For me, I get stressed out and discouraged way too easily if I feel I have to take on the world all at once. Instead, I have to break things up into manageable chunks as it helps to be objective and realistic. Okay, I'm not going to be able to climb Mount Everest in a day, so let's just take it one step at a time. And when I break things down, it makes the game of building Perspective Collective winnable, but most importantly, enjoyable. So what is it you're working towards or trying to build in your spare time? If you have that massive to-do list, what's one thing on it that you can knock out today to get you started? Knocking out one thing a day is progress. Progress is addicting. And when you string together a couple days, you begin to build momentum. It's the exact same thing with like starting a new habit like working out or starting a new practice like calligraphy. You're going to suck at first. It's going to be hard. You're not going to see progress right away, but you got to stick with it. A few days turn into a week. A week turns into a month. Months turn into years. The more progress you see with anything the more you find ways to create more time to invest in it. The second thing I want to talk about is planning the night before. Are you a routine person or do you prefer to take life as it comes and react? I used to be the one who would wing it and see what happens each day. Without a plan... I made minimal progress in a million directions. While I can be a cluttered person at times, that's probably my default, I thrive off structure and knowing what my next move is going to be. Getting shit done and being productive is the best high I've ever experienced, and I'm always itching to get that fix. If shit doesn't get scheduled, it doesn't get done in my world, and it'll sit on my to-do list. That's why at 9 p.m. each day, Siri, my homegirl Siri, reminds me to plan my next day, which literally takes me under five minutes. And during this time, I schedule open pockets of time within my passion planner to get that one thing finished. And when I'm talking about pockets of time, it could be the mornings before I go to work. You know, I get up a little bit early so I can grind. I have my lunch break. You know, sometimes it's 30 minutes, sometimes it's an hour. And I will work through my lunch and stay at work and get stuff done. I also get two 10-minute breaks in a day, which I'll, you know, make time to get something done. And finally, when I get home from the gym after work, you know, I, I find those pockets of focus time to knock out what I feel is most necessary. Without planning that one big thing during those times, my mind tends to stray and... I know you're like me, you find yourself mindlessly scrolling through social media. One big thing a day for me could look like writing 1,000 words for the podcast and blog, recording and editing an episode, finalizing the episode artwork, polishing and sending some type of deliverables to a client. So let me ask you, what could that one big thing a day look like for you? What are those free pockets of time in a day that you aren't taking advantage of? I really believe anyone can accomplish one thing a day with this approach and you don't have to be as hyper structured as I am to see the benefits. All right, the third and the final, kill the distractions. This may be the hardest one as we live in an era where we are wired to love distractions. As a culture, We're addicted to notifications, 
emails, DMs, text messages, features on Instagram, etc. I am totally guilty of letting these distractions take me away from my work once in a while. But it starts with being aware of what you're doing. If you're serious about building something for yourself, hold yourself accountable and kill the distractions. Go into that scheduled pocket of time you planned the night before and get your shit done. For me, there are a couple things I like to do to handle this. I turn off all notifications on my phone, except for text messages. Seriously, social media notifications are going to fuck your world up. Second, I have a do not disturb period set on my phone between 9 p.m. and 7 a.m. That way I can plan my night and, you know, read or do something to get ready to go to bed because I have insomnia sometimes. And then for 7 a.m., I have nothing bugging me until I get ready to go to work. That way I can grind in the mornings. And another thing that I do is that I keep my writing app or anything I'm currently working on just on one screen and I keep my secondary screen turned off so that way I'm not tempted to surf or just check my Facebook real quick if people still use Facebook I still do you can find me over there but yes I only keep one screen going at a time that way I can tunnel vision into strictly my work nothing else going on around me really the only times I allow myself to be on social media while I work is when I'm sharing the process of a drawing on my Instagram stories You should check that out if you ever wondered what my process is like. So if you want to work your way into some type of deep work, I suggest starting off small by doing 20 to 30 minutes of uninterrupted distraction-free time. That's how I would start off. And from there, work your way up and shoot for an hour. And then you can gradually add more time as it fits within your schedule. I know we're all busy, so you working a day job and having the kids, it's probably unrealistic to say that you're going to have two to three hours of undistracted time. I get it. I'm not putting that stress on you. And if you want to dig deeper into working distraction-free, I highly recommend checking out the book Deep Work by Cal Newport. Again, this will be in the show notes at perspective-collective.com slash 42. All right, let's wrap things up. I totally understand that finding time isn't easy to work on the things you want to. Rarely is it convenient, and we are all experts at coming up with reasons why we can't get to this or that within a day. I believe motivation comes from the act of doing, and you're never going to find the motivation if you only do things when they are convenient. Be honest with yourself. You have these pockets of time in a day, even if they are only in 10-minute spurts. Those little 10-minute spurts are gold, and you're capable of knocking out a quick sketch, writing 200 words, Recording a quick video clip or some type of audio on the go. You don't have to be hyper-structured. You just have to be intentional with the sacred time that you have in a day if you're serious about building something for yourself. And you have what it takes. So find the time and get to work. Momentum and progress will follow you along the way. I hope you're finding some type of value in the show, especially when I'm going to this every other week format. It's really helping with my sanity right now, but eventually within the next couple months when things slow down, I will get back to the weekly show and I'm approaching the one year mark in August and I can't wait. I'm trying to figure out how to do something special. I started this August 19th last year and this shit has just blown my mind how it's taken off. I could have never expected you know, what it's turned into now, and I have you to thank for that. So if you're finding any value from the show, one of the best ways is to head over to iTunes and do a rating and review. It takes just a couple minutes to leave some feedback. Hopefully it's positive, but I'll take negative too. If you have any feedback for me, you know, on how I can improve this show, hit me up at scotty at perspective-collective.com. You know, shoot me an email. I will see it. I will respond when I get to it. And... One of the best ways you can support this show, because it's not easy grinding with the day job, trying to do freelance, trying to pay student loans, this or that, and, you know, keep up with the daily expenses, because this does cost me money to do this podcast. And it not only costs money, it takes a lot of time. And one of the ways you can give back is over at patreon.com slash perspective podcast. And $1, $3, $5 per episode really helps this show grow, helps take care of expenses, and helps me upgrade equipment so I can keep producing a 
bomb ass amazing show for you. And if you have other ways of how I can give you more rewards for you being a pledger, please let me know. Let me know other ways that I can give value back to you. I'm always trying to find ways to go the extra mile to get you what you need. I need to give a huge thank you to Nick Jenkins of Bluka for all the dope music you hear on this show. He actually just put out his most recent new EP, and you can find that over at SoundCloud.com slash Bluka. That's B-L-O-O-K-A-H, and he's got a couple festivals he'll be playing this summer. So keep a lookout for him. And as always, I need to thank you so much for lending me your time and lending me your ears. You could be doing anything else in the world right now, but you're here with me, and I'm extremely thankful. And I want to just encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this.